Everyone comes to meditation with a divided mind. Part of the mind wants to meditate, and the other part has other plans, has other agendas. It's not just two parts, there are lots of parts. So you have to recognize the fact and be prepared for it. And one of the ways is to remind yourself of all the, the dangers that come from not meditating. And the other way is to remind yourself of all the benefits that come when you do. They say the people who excel at a physical skill, and we're not just talking about doing it well, we're talking about doing it really well, are the ones who have a very strong sense that if you master the skill, there are a lot of benefits that come. But if you get sloppy even the least little bit, they're going to be dangerous. So we want to bring that attitude to the meditation. This is why some of the chants we have before the meditation deal with aging, illness, death, separation. The fact that the world is swept away, does not endure, offers no shelter, there's no one in charge. That narrows your attention down to what you're doing right now. As one of the contemplations does say, we're heirs to our actions. Whatever good or evil we're going to meet with in life come from our actions. Where do your actions come from? They come from the mind. So you really do want to train the mind. The positive contemplations are the ones you remind yourself of what the Buddha was able to attain, what the noble disciples were all able to attain. This is something really special. We're fortunate that his teachings are still alive. The teachings of a Buddha don't last forever. The drama is always the same, but the, the fact that it's been expressed, passed on from generation to generation, that's something that happens sometimes and not at others. We happen to be in an era when the Buddha's teachings are still being passed on. And not just in the words, there's the apprenticeship, what you might call the guild. is still very much alive. So there is the opportunity to train. Because as the Buddha said, the qualities that led to his awakening, that led to his realization that there was a deathless happiness, things like ardency, resolution, heedfulness, these weren't his exclusive possessions. We all have them to some extent, or we have the potential. So the opportunity is here, the potential is here. So you can use those thoughts to put you in a positive frame of mind. And then it's simply a matter of learning how to apply them at the, the appropriate times. Develop an enthusiasm for your meditation object, an enthusiasm for the training and a sense of wariness and heedfulness around anything that would pull you away. Because as the Buddha said, heedfulness is the base of everything that's skillful. In other words, you see there are dangers, both outside and in your mind. But if you are careful, you can avoid those dangers. If the dangers were totally unavoidable, heedfulness wouldn't mean anything. You could take all the care in the world and you'd still suffer from the dangers. But here you can make a difference. And you've got the opportunity right now. You've tried everything else. Think back over the many lifetimes. That you've devoted all kinds of other things. Here's an opportunity to Focus directly on the mind, and train the mind, and test the Buddha's claims. Are they really true? Are they something that you can give rise to within yourself? Can you prove him right or wrong? And it's an important issue, the possibility of a true happiness, a happiness that doesn't have to depend on conditions. 
that can be attained through human effort. His announcement of that possibility is a challenge. And here's your opportunity to take that challenge. To look at this as a special time, a special opportunity. To do something really worthwhile. And if you find your enthusiasm flags, well, think about the dangers of not finding this kind of happiness and the regret, the regret you would feel that if it's there, it's a possibility, but you didn't take it. There's a story in the canon of a, a man who had many opportunities to practice, but he kept turning them down, turning them down, finding other things to do. And finally passed away. And after he passed away, the Buddha commented, you know, if early in life he had gone on the path, he would have become an arahant. Even if he'd gone on the path late in life, he would have become a stream enter. But he threw those possibilities away. It's a chilling story. And one of the forest John says that. The proper response to all this is to give it everything you've got. And this doesn't mean that you have to strain yourself to the point of exhaustion every day, but it means you have to use all of the strengths you have. Strength of conviction, strength of persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment, to figure out what is the appropriate right effort right now, how much effort. What kind of effort? So you don't have the regret later on that maybe if you had developed those strengths a little bit more, it would, would have taken you further. So again, it's not a matter of brute strength or brute effort. It's wise effort. Which in many ways is more difficult than just brute effort. Brute effort, you can just push, 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 push. But with wise effort, you have to figure out, well, what's the appropriate thing right now? How much? How much is just right? How much is properly focused effort? As with any amount of practice, it's not just the amount of practice, but it's when you're practicing what you focus on. There's a book on learning how to be a good swimmer. It makes the point it's not so much how many hours you put into swimming, but you maintain proper form all the way throughout. If you put in lots of hours but your form is bad, it's actually going to be bad for your swimming. And sometimes it's better to put in just a few, few laps, but with very good form. So you have to use all your intelligence all around to figure out how much and what and how is the right effort right now. The effort that makes use of your discernment and, as you develop it, develops your discernment. This is a very important skill. And always keep that in mind. It is a skill. This is why we have the, the apprenticeship. It's not just a matter of reading books and deciding on your own what the Dharma means. A lot of the Dharma I learned in Thailand had nothing to do with what I was reading. It was all just being around a John Fu. And again, it wasn't his Dharma talks or even his Dharma conversations sometimes, just seeing him in action and allowing him to see me in action. That was an important part of the training. And as for the guild, which is the Sangha, I was reading recently about Benvenuto Cellini and how he'd broken from the, the guild of goldsmiths in the late Middle Ages because he felt he was way more talented than everybody else. And then he wanted to promote himself as you know, the Michelangelo of gold. And he did some amazing things, but in the course of it he discovered that without the guild to support him. He had to please public opinion. Now he tried his best to shape public opinion through his writings. 
But he kept running up against the problem again and again and again, that if he wanted to survive as an artist, he had to find people who would pay for his creations, and he had to please them. It's a story of a king who had gotten a crucifix that he had done, and he decided he wanted to add a little fig leaf to the crucifix. Cellini complained. He said, what are you doing to my work of art? And the king said, what do you mean, your work of art? I paid for it. It's mine. And this is what happens with the Dharma when it becomes a source of livelihood for people who don't belong to the guild. Whoever pays the piper determines what songs are being played. It's one of the reasons why having the guild is an important part of the practice, important part of the training. There's a standard that's maintained. And there may be a lot of mediocre members of the guild, but the guild does provide the opportunity to practice without the, without the pressure to have to teach before you're ready, or have to teach what's going to be immediately pleasing to people. So it means the opportunity is here. The support is here. All that's needed is your determination to make the most of it.